Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Friday, June 7, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Genesis chapter 6, reading from verse 8 to 22. And it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah beget three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee a ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee, will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wives, and thy sons' wives with thee. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing, of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. We thank God this morning for his words. And the reading says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we too can find grace in God's eyes. It says that Noah, he walked with God. And when the scripture speaks about someone walking with God, it means that they have been living a faithful life and they have been walking according to what he commands so noah was a true christian or noah was a christian and also we understand that he was a man that command is also all after him and so in his family they were eight people noah his wife his three sons and their wives now god looked down on the earth that he had made and he saw that men their heart it was corrupted his creation his beautiful creation was infected with the disease of sin and it was full of violence so these men they were vile they were wicked and so god looked on the earth and said, look here i have to destroy this earth that i created and so he instructed noah that he is going to destroy the earth and that Noah should build an ark. But he didn't allow Noah to come up with the blueprint or the specifications. He provided that. And you realize that anytime God is going to do something that is the, uh, so crucial and important, he never allow man to come up with the blueprint to execute that plan. He comes up with the plan. And he gives them the outline and then tell them or instructed what to do. 
is not what he did with the sanctuary. Moses wasn't the one that came up with the idea of the sanctuary and all the specification of the sanctuary. God never leave that up to Moses. He told Moses what to do and told him of the specifications. And in the same way here, God told Noah of the specification and what he needed to do because God did not want anything to go wrong. So it was crucial that it would have been done properly. And so he instructed Noah that Noah should build the ark from a special kind of wood. It says a gopher wood. I don't know what that is like. I get it's, it's some, something that is used to build boats or it can endure water. And so the specification was given to him. Make it of gopher wood and also make several rooms in the ark because it's not you alone going to be in there. And also I want you to paint it without and within with pitch so that is something like tar i guess something to keep the water out so the wood won't be enough to keep the water out you need to paint it with the pitch to also cock up any little crease that the water may may find to creep in to make it well secure for everybody inside and so noah follow god's instruction to the t and he build the ark three stories high and you realize that God only told Noah to put one window and one door imagine that and he told him where to put the window and the door so everything was very specific and Noah had to follow that guideline and so after the ark was finished God told Noah that he need to call the animals in the ark two by two male and female right now you see that god when god do things he thinks beyond what you human comprehension can can do what if god had called just female animals into the ark do you think that the the animal world would have continued what if he had called just the male animals do you think that the the animal world would have continued no can a two female animal reproduce no can two male animal reproduce and so for those who are of the idea that god somehow have a corrupt way of thinking and also that god is a god that goes against his own plan i am telling you that you have a misguided way of thinking and it's obviously that you think that god is somehow not a wise god but that's another subject for another time let us stick to what we are saying here and so the animals were invited into the ark and then noah and this family they were also invited into the ark so all eight of them and then god shut the door we know the story all too well no the reading says that Noah found grace. Let us focus on that for a moment. It therefore means that it doesn't matter the situation that is happening around us. We can still find grace in God. It means therefore that God still looks down on his people and those who are steadfast in their faithfulness towards him. Because with all the, that has been happening around Noah, he could have joined everybody else and be disobedient to God and get involved in all kind of things. But he said, no, I am going to walk the path of faithfulness. And God loves when we are able to stand up even in the midst of corruption, even in the midst of great perils and show forth our loyalty to him and he certainly reward those kind of resolve and so this morning i want to encourage someone that it doesn't matter what is happening around you you too can find grace in god in fact the word of god said that his grace is sufficient for you and don't make the mistake to think that because God loves you so much or because God loves us so much 
he will never punish us or destroy us because as we saw from the reading just now that this was his beloved creation but he destroyed it in order to start over the process of renewing things and to get rid of a sin and the corruption that was happening and so the earth went through a purifying and so when sin heightened god always stepped in and does something the same thing he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. And so when we look in the world today and we see the moral decay of the world, if God can say this about the antediluvian world or about the people in Noah time and also about the folks back in Sodom and Gomorrah, I am almost sure that we have somehow surpassed these nations by now with the lever of wickedness that we have reached the magnifying of sin without any regard for God and for righteousness and moral living. I believe that we have surpassed them. But because somehow we are not being drawn up as the saying go, yet we feel that somehow we have won and we are getting away with something. But I tell you that God never does anything without warning. He gave the people a chance to repent that they too could receive his grace and evade the impending judgment that was about to come upon the world and the same message goes to us today God says that he's gonna destroy this world again and I know many are out there of the belief that God will never do that because he loves us too much he loves his creation too much but I want to remind you that this is the same God that destroyed these nations. And if he did it before, he will do it again as long as he see the need for it. And so you and I must be careful that we don't find ourselves on the opposite side of God. Because then we will receive of the wrath of his hand. And so stand your ground. Be faithful. Don't join the bandwagon. The saying goes that broad is the way that leads to destruction. So everybody might be doing the thing. And it certainly doesn't mean that you need to join them. You need to stand out and to be different. That is how you create change in the world. It's not by joining everyone that you see going down a particular path. No, you need to remain steadfast to who you are and more so to God. So God preserved the life of this family because they were faithful to him and because they stood in a time that there was moral and spiritual decay in the world. And so I want to encourage somebody this morning that stand your ground, be faithful, accept God's grace and God will reward you. Accept God's grace and he will reward your family as you lead your family after the will of God like Noah. And so friends, may you accept this morning the lifeline that God is offering to you and to me. And may we receive it with humility as we seek to remain faithful and to trust God that he will protect us and that the floods will not overcome us. But we will ride in the ark of safety with Jesus and be secure for all time. May God bless you and may God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.